well, integrated urban water management is not a concept that was defined one day uh, in a definitive way. It's rather it's a set of practices that cities that needed to address their water challenges in a more integrated way have been developing first in Brazil and then in other parts of Latin America. Um, basically, these cities recognize that there are uh, needs to address water and not just from the standpoint of the water utility or from the standpoint of the urban planner or from the standpoint of the economic developer, but you know that bringing these different standpoints together could bring a win-win-win situation. We saw really that the first cities to adopt these uh, type of practices were cities mostly in, in Brazil, uh, you know, somewhat, and this was probably in the 90s or so. Uh, later on, you had cities in, uh, in uh, Colombia very active on that. Uh, at the moment, you have also cities in, in uh, Argentina. Uh, but, you know, we have discussions also with the government of, uh, the, of uh, Mexico and the, the Mexico Valley, which is, you know, 20 million people living in, a, in one watershed and, and drawing most of their water resources from outside of the watershed. So these issues are, are relevant for any very large or even mid-sized metropolitan area, really. You have in the city of Sao Paulo, about 60% uh, of its water supply comes from reservoirs that are very basically within the city area. I mean, it wasn't originally, but the city has grown to include them. And so you have uh, slums developing on the shores of these reservoirs and contaminating the, wa the water quality that's then um, uh, used for, for, water, for drinking water in the city. And so the, a lot of the work they did around this was to bring together the municipalities, to bring together the social, the leaders of these um, uh, slums, and to bring uh, the, the water utilities, and think about what kind of approaches would help these people uh, um, get better quality of life, and at the same time stop the contamination problem. So, you're talking about uh, measures such as uh, uh, slum upgrading, uh, improvement of uh, the condition, the living conditions in the slums, the installation of uh, wastewater um, catchment and treatment facilities on the shores, so that you're preserving a water resource for the city of Sao Paulo. In the same time, you're also doing something that will help the, uh, the dwellers of these, uh, of these slums. But there are other examples. For example, um, the city of Sao Paulo has a number of green corridors, a number of, um, of um, uh, waterways that cross the city. And these waterways traditionally were actually very contaminated. And so they were not um, defining uh, element of uh, the ur urban fabric and what uh, the the uh, again the state together with the water utility and the municipalities have been doing in the last few years has been to really try to clean up and uh, uh, restore these different waterways so they would become almost like you know an uh, fabric uh, part of the uh, urban fabric people would start um, being able to use them as uh, an enjoyable green areas instead of uh, seeing them as a, a contamination source for the city. And so, you know, this is a little bit what we're talking about, turning uh, um, environmental liability into urban assets. You're really trying to recuperate the, uh, the water and water bodies in the city as a living part of your urban uh, uh, fabric and the urban development process. One thing we, we have realized um, in, in our experience is very often, uh, even assuming financing is available, it's maybe not in the hands of those who really need it to implement the measures or you know, the way that it's being dispersed or provided is not, does not pre create the incentives that you would be looking for. And so uh, very often developing in interesting or, or uh, uh, conducive financing schemes is also a really, really important part of, uh, of uh, thinking about integrated urban water management.